Did you know that you can use outboard effects such as analog compressors, equalizers or reverbs in Logic Pro as if they were a plugin? Well, this time I'm going to show you how you can accomplish that with built-in Logic tools and RME audio interfaces. But before we continue, please make sure that you've subscribed to our channel to get notified whenever we upload a new video. For this demo, we are going to use the UCX2 and the Illusia Impressa 500. In two previous videos, we've already shown how analog hardware can be used as an insert or send effect in Total Mix FX. Since we are going to apply this same technique in this tutorial, I strongly recommend you to watch the other videos as well. This will give you a profound understanding of signal routing in Total Mix FX. The links are in the description box below. All right. Let's head over to Total Mix FX and Logic Pro. Once you've opened up Logic Pro X, select an audio or MIDI track in your project and head over to the channel strip section on the left hand side. Click on the audio effect slot to open up the plugin pop up menu. Under utility, you'll find the IO plugin. Let's focus shortly now on hardware routing. Outputs 3 and 4 of the 5-phase UCX2 are connected to the inputs of the Illusia Impressor 500, sending the audio signal out of the computer into the analog compressor. To get the processed signal back into the computer, the outputs of the Illusia Impressor 500 are connected to inputs 5 and 6 of the 5-phase UCX2. So far, so good. The I.O. Utility plugin is one of the most simple plugins in Logic Pro X. It features an output and an input section. Under output, we select the two output channels from the Fireface UCX2 that go straight into the input of the Illusia Impressa 500. As previously mentioned, these are outputs 3 and 4. Now we need to get the processed return signal from the Impressa 500 back into Logic Pro. For this, we go to Input and select the input channels of the Fireface UCX2, which are connected to the output of the Illusia Impressa 500. In this case, inputs 5 and 6. Individual volume controls for adjusting input and output levels respectively are located next to the I.O. section. This will help you to avoid clipping at any stage of the signal flow. If you are unfamiliar with digital and analog level matching, and you want to know how you can avoid clipping, watch our dedicated video. A quite unique feature of Logic's I.O. plugin is the ability to measure the real-time latency of your setup by detecting the delay between the selected outputs and inputs. Following detection, any delay is automatically compensated for. Since most analog hardware effects introduce latency, you would normally have to manually compensate for any delays by adjusting latency values once you go out of the computer. Especially in combination with a dry-wet control, latency compensation can be crucial in order to avoid phasing when mixing dry and wet audio signals. Click on Ping to start the automatic latency detection. Because most of the audio routing takes place in Logic, the setup process in Total Mix FX is very straightforward. First, go to outputs 3 and 4 and make sure that only software playback channels 3 and 4 are routed to that particular submix. Remember, we selected outputs 3 and 4 in the I.O. utility plugin. Hence, Logic sends the audio to the software playback channels 3 and 4. For more information on signal routing in Total Mix FX, go check out our Beginner's Guide video series. In order to ensure that no other signal is routed to outputs 3 and 4, it is advisable to clear the submix 3 and 4 beforehand. With a right mouse click on outputs 3 and 4, we open up the channel option menu, where we can clear the submix. This will delete all routings for that particular submix. As Total Mix FX includes an unlimited undo, the delete process can be undone without any problem. Now we just route software playback channels 3 and 4 to submix 3 and 4. As last step, make sure that neither software playback channels 3 and 4 or input channels 5 and 6 are routed to your headphones or speakers. Otherwise, this could lead to phasing problems on your monitors. 
By default, Logic's main output is routed to software playback channels 1 and 2. Therefore, having the send and return signals from the Impressa 500 on your monitors or headphones is not needed. Alright, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, write them down in the comment section below and I see you in the next video.